Well, hey everybody. Um, had a good friend of mine um, get some elderberries and they were asking about how to make the elderberry syrup. So I thought uh, probably the easiest thing to do would just be to make a quick video. So this is my standard recipe. Um, I got it somewhere originally so long ago that I, I can't credit it back any longer. So, um, but what we already got in the pot here is 10 cups of water and then one pound, three ounces. These are fresh frozen elderberries that I picked. So those go in the pot next. And I, I would say that um, pretty routine for me that the one pound, three ounces is four cups of um, frozen elderberries. And next is um, the recipe is for cinnamon. Um, you can use ground or sticks. Um, I happen to have ground right now. And if you're using sticks, the three sticks, if you're using the ground, it's three TSPs, three teaspoons. And just uh, all these are kind of a vibe. You don't have to be scientific with your measurement. Um, ground ginger. Three TSPs, three tablespoons, no, three teaspoons of those. And dump those in. Get close. And we're not building a watch here. All right. And then the last um, ingredient that needs cooked is whole cloves, which are uh, cool. I'm supposed to do nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine. All right. And so what we'll do then, just stir it all up. The ground cinnamon and the ground ginger don't like to mix very much with the water. So you gotta stir, stir. And then the last part I'll show you on the cooking side of it is you want to um, boil it to half of the volume. So I take a Sharpie marker and there's there's a mark up here already. That's for a bigger batch. So for me, my liquid level is about right here. So I'll make that mark so that I know when I've got about half of it boiled off. Again, it's not fine woodworking. Um, just get it close. I've got the fire on kind of low, kind of medium. And we'll come back in a little bit once it's down to the final level, about half. Hey, okay, well, um, had a little bit of a mishap. The fire had gone out. I came back and turned it back on and turned it up quite a bit. And we did have some boil over, which is <laughs> part of the reason why we do this outside. But it is about half of the regular volume that we started with. Understanding, of course, we lost a little bit. So we'll just turn it off, let it sit for a little bit, and go to the next step. Okay, so it's been a few hours and uh, the elderberries are all drained out. So we just uh, throw those in the garbage. I don't know if you're a composter or whatever, you could probably do that. Um, and then I've got a couple uh, pans, I like to use the pan to pan because what I'll do is then I'll, I'll pour this raw syrup off and I'm really looking for right here for when there starts to be a good amount of sediment coming with it right there. So it probably won't come over very well, but there's sediment in there um, from the cinnamon and from the berries and I just don't like it. Um, so Ended up with, looks like a quart or so of uh, liquid. And we'll let this sit for a little while. I did see, I got some seeds and some things that I'll have to pluck out individually. And we'll do the next step. All right, so the last step, um, this has sat here for a while and, and cooled off. So uh, what I do is I just heat it up just a, just a little bit. Um, just basically so that the honey mixes better. 
So we just, just again, just a little bit to get the honey mixed in. This is about a half a pint of my honey. And again, I don't really measure uh, the honey. I don't think you can have too much, but might as well use this jar up. This is my jar that I just keep around the kitchen for my own use. So I'll fill that up later out of the bucket and then spend just a few minutes just stirring in the honey really good. Really don't want to heat it up, heat it up, just to make sure that the honey mixes up well. And from there, we take it over here. And I like this pan a lot. Um, this is a T-Fal pan, T-F-A-L, I think I got it at Walmart. But I like it a lot because um, not only does it have the measurements on the inside about proximate volume, which this is saying uh, 1.5 quarts, um, but also it's got a nice pour spout. What I'll do then is, uh, if I don't think I have enough for a full jar, I just, I keep my own jar in the refrigerator and uh, I'll, I'll fill that up here later. Last step, put the label on it. This has all the ingredients. I got these from Blue Sky Bee Supply. It's got all the ingredients that you use and I had to leave the volume amount blank in case I did different amounts, but pretty much only sell these by the pint anymore. So anyhow, that was how to make elderberry syrup. Thanks for watching. I hope you found that useful.